Congratulations for making a great decision. You're in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, coming to you as always from our great studios. And we have an outstanding guest. That's why I want to congratulate you. I can sit and listen to Lou Anarumo talk defense, the defensive side of football, forever. The guy is Menza in terms of defense. And his players are responding to everything that he puts out there from a game plan standpoint. You know you have a great coach when players are like, can't wait for Wednesday, man. What's what's Lou going to have for us this week? What do, how are we going to try to exploit this defensive, uh, this offensive football team with our defense? How about the red zone defense that they played against the Seattle Seahawks? Five red zone opportunities, one touchdown, one field goal, interception in the red zone, and twice stopped him on downs. Five red zone possessions, 10 measly points, two points per possession. Bengals went two for two in the red zone, touchdowns. That was the difference in the football game. But the defense won this football game. And we're going to hear Lou Anarumo tell you why. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And we are coming to you from our studios, as we always do, with a star. I'm telling you, you, you know, there's stars of the game, players, they're always, you know, players are stars of the game. There's a star of the game also from a coaching standpoint, and this guy did it again. Yep. A couple of days ago, we were doing a radio show together, and I said, you know, I, gotta, I have a publisher lined up. <laughs> We're going to do a book. Lou Anarumo is going to author a book. Red Zone Defense by Lou Anarumo. How to get it done in the red zone and the low red zone. That was the story of the football game, Coach. I mean, man, five possessions in the red zone by an NFL team, a good offensive football team, and they come up with 10 points, two points per possession, a touchdown, a field goal, interception, stop them twice on downs to win a football game. Amazing. Well, I appreciate that laugh. It was a great, great effort by, uh, by everybody, you know, um, man, the players really executed down there and, um, you know, we wouldn't, we wanted them not to get down there a couple times, but, uh, uh, but yeah, we, we, we did well. And, uh, the guys executed the plan to a T It was great. What's the, what's the biggest key to red zone success? Is there one or is it multiple things? What do you have to do? Right. Well, you try not to let them run it in and, uh, you know, you want to present some fronts that allow, you know, to give you your best opportunity to not let them do that. And then, you know, okay. And then get them into those downs where, you know, they're going to throw it. And then we can, you know, put the coverages where we think they need to go based on the team we're playing. Man, I'll tell you, you're, uh, you, you call your, your defensive front four, the core four, the guys that uh, give you the, the preponderance of snaps. And boy, they played a, a ton of snaps. Your 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 big four. There's there's no doubt about that. Talk about what they gave you uh, during the course of that football game in terms of uh, effort, number of snaps, and then particularly down the stretch. Uh, and you basically laid it out there. You said, you know, hey, let's go win this football game. I'm playing you guys. Tell us all about that. Yeah, I mean, you look at their snaps. You know, I think Sam had the most in the 60s. He was is really up there, and with all his production, and you know, DJ was up in the 50s, and BJ, and and certainly Trey, and and so when it came down to you know the end of the game, although they had you know kind of exhausted their fuel tanks, uh, I went over to him uh, before the last drive, and I just said, "You four are going out there," uh, and not that they didn't want to. Trust me. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, they were a little bit tired um, and they just they gave us everything they had. Um, and I was so proud of them. not just them, but everybody. But I, I wouldn't want four of the guys out there at the same time running the games the way they did together. And, you know, BJ and Sam setting up that last critical fourth down hit on the quarterback, which got the ball out. We win the game. So uh, it was a great example of rush and coverage working together on some of those snaps. And, um, right. you know, I was very proud of everybody. Pro football focus numbers are out, and Sam uh, and and B.J. Hill, six pressures each. Reader and Hendrickson, five pressures each. Cam Sample, 
12 pass rushes, three pressures, including a quarterback sack. I mean, um, really, really get after it up front as, as a defensive unit. They were they were teeing off, weren't they, Coach? Yeah, they 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 got after them, and uh, you know, just as I said, just working together uh, in in a you know coordinated hop. Coach Hob does a great job with those guys, just coordinating the rushes and you know making sure we're doing the right thing because Gino can get out and run. So we not only did we not allow that, we we also collapsed the pocket and we're able to get them on the ground too. Red zone in the second half, four possessions in the second half. I counted 16 snaps, you know, the snaps that didn't count because of penalty. But, I mean, there was some action on those snaps as well. But 16 snaps, 18 yards total on those 16 snaps in the red zone. Three points, an interception, stopped him twice on fourth down. That's crazy, Coach. 16 snaps in the red zone in the second half? Are you kidding me? And 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 rising up like you guys did snap after snap? That is big time. Yeah. Again, I, as, as I mentioned, I think it was just a, everybody having a great feel of what we needed to do, who the primary targets were. Uh, don't let nine run the ball in. Um, and, you know, just coordinating some of the things that uh, they did well and trying to make sure that if they were going to beat us, they were going to beat us with their third and fourth option, not their first and second. So talk about your Monday ceremony a little bit, Coach. We're in the defensive meeting room. You have a ceremony with the bricks, and uh, take take us take us through that. And how how's that uh, pyramid forming for you right now? <laughs> yeah, well, we got it. We always we always start it with uh, we started it last year, and um, you know we uh, we started with a couple of big cinder blocks, and you know we put the opponent's uh, logo on the brick, uh, and then kind of the players of the game will stack the bricks and after a win and, you know, just kind of form in the foundation. We started with a, with a block in the middle after training camp um, start. That's always the first one. And then we kind of build from there after victories. And uh, I, you know, like I said, it's usually the guy or two that had a huge impact. Well, we had BJ, DJ, Trey and Sam, all four of them carry that brick up and kind of lock it into place. So we feel like we really got a good foundation going. I like that one, Coach. You, you have one. One the first brick is basically the player that gave you the most during training camp. Is that how that one works? Kind of symbolize it, or you know, uh, a little bit of everything involved in that one. It could be just a veteran guy or a young guy that's done well. Um, but knowing myself, it generally speaking, will be an older guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you. Cam Taylor Britt, two interceptions in the last two football games. And 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 and, and that's the thing. I mean, Dobbs and, and this this quarterback, I mean, they, they had thrown uh, combined one interception. One. And Dobbs hadn't thrown one all year. And you get two off of him, and you get two in this football game against Seattle. I mean, four interceptions against quarterbacks that going into your game. Had thrown one com- one total uh, combined, and Cam Taylor Britt two huge interceptions. The the one for the pick six was a turning point in that football game, and then this one where he diving interception gets up, returns to twenty four yards, two and a half first downs. The offense doesn't have to worry about. Good thing because three incompletions. I mean, they didn't get an inch. Have to get a fifty two yard field goal. Cam Taylor Britt's been massive in these two games, hasn't he? Well, Cam's uh, the ultimate competitor. Uh, and ever since he got here last year, he's always shown that he's shown a, a, a grit, a toughness that you can't coach. And, um, you know, and that, that come that w- along with all his God given ability. And, uh, man, he's, he's just, uh, he accepts the challenge of covering some of these elite receivers and he's done a terrific job and he just keeps getting better. Thing about him, when you shake his hand, he's got a big old mucker on him now. I mean, it's like. From from uh, little tip of the little finger to the to the thumb. I mean, he's he's got a big hand. When when the ball is in the air, his ball skills are phenomenal with those big suction cup hands he has. Then you have other defensive backs with really long arms, rangy. You've got some guys in the back end, young guys that have serious physical traits. Oh, there's no doubt. And uh, you know, as as I mentioned, they along with Cam, you know, DJ Turner, and they they're all improving each week. And that we're going to need those guys to be at their best coming back off the bye with uh, some of the great teams we're about to play. Coach, um, you know, I know, I know you have just 
a limitless number of things that you can do in terms of uh, installation of, of concepts and adjustments and blitz packages and pressure packages. Are the young guys showing you that, hey, coach, go ahead, you know, I'm, I'll get up to speed. I can handle it. I know when young players are obviously going to make some mistakes, you have to work through those. But are they pretty good on, with regard to uh, consuming and understanding all that stuff? Yeah, they continue to improve. Um, I think that the uh, the peer pressure of their uh, the other nine guys that have been here uh, of the standard being that this is kind of how we operate around here, and you know you you've got to conform or or the train will keep moving type of approach. And so um, you know we force fed those guys a lot of different things, and um, you know you just can't do one thing in this league that the offenses are too good. And so yeah, I feel like they've they've been able to handle. Um, you know, what we've thrown at them so far. I know uh, players are off, but the coaches are still working. Got, got some work to do. I know you're doing some self-scouting. And uh, when you're breaking things down, giving a critical eye uh, to your to your defensive performance at this stage of the season, what do you like most? Um, you know, I like how we're getting after the quarterback for sure. I like how we're taking the ball away. I think that that's important, uh, obviously. Um, you know, we've, we've been able to, uh, you know, get, as you just saw, play some pretty good red zone defense, yeah. uh, kind of keep that going. Uh, and then I think the things that we need to improve, obviously we did improve our tackling this past week, uh, back to an, uh, you know, a number that is acceptable for us. Uh, anytime you're in the four or five missed tackle day, that's, you don't want to miss any, but, um, that's not, rea that's not reality. So. Right. If we can be the four or fives, uh, we'll take that. Um, and then, you know, just uh, more consistency. Those would be the things that we need to – we can't have a bad stretch. You know, we, Seattle comes out and walks right down the field. We, we, we can't have that. So um, the players know that. and it's a, it's a tweak here or there. And, you know, coming out of the bye, we'll be better for it. And you talk about shutting the team down after that first drive, though. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, man. Uh, I could tell you weren't real happy, Coach. You were coming off that sideline and, and, and greeting players as they were coming off the field after wow. that uh, after that first drive. I'm sure you had some uh, some things that you wanted to talk about, and 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 certainly the players were listening. And there's no doubt that's the thing that that impresses me is I mean the players are so close, uh, the coaches are so close, the players are close with the coaches, and uh, just every level of it is. Uh, Nobody wants to let the other the other guy down, and that's that's going to take you a long way. There's no question. Okay, coach, it's bye week. Um, when you do get some time, what's uh, what's in store for Lou Anarumo here during the bye week? What's the itinerary look like? I think we're heading down to uh, our annual uh, trip down to uh, uh, over to Morgantown, West Virginia, to uh, see my son, who's a junior over there, and um, so we'll be down there this weekend. Yeah. Catching a little little college football action, huh? I will. I will be in the stands as a fan. I think we're playing uh, Oklahoma State, um, so we'll see. But yeah, I get a chance to see my son, and that's uh, you know what's most important. So how's he? Uh, is he in, in, enjoying his experience? He loves it there. Yeah, maybe too much. I got to check in on him too. That's another reason to go. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're watching, when you when you're in the stands. You have a, a coaching eye, or are you are you just watching it as a fan? How, how how do you observe a game like that? I'm just trying not to get beer spilled on me, so I just sit there <laughs> quiet and watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. A quick question or two. I know you're in the early stages and very early stages of uh, breaking down the San Francisco 49ers, but your next opponent after the bye week, they've got a Monday night game, and then you know you guys travel out there and play them. Uh, they have a short week, and you've got the West Coast trip. I mean, there's you can make arguments as to whatever, but mm -hmm. you know it's a good opponent. There's no question about that. What give us um, a couple of things that that have struck you about the 49ers when you've looked at uh, the initial stages of tape here? Well, I mean, you know, they've always been able. Uh, you know, Kyle does a great job of managing the game, calling the game. Um, you know, they have. Uh, elite players at a number of positions, um, you know, the running back, the left tackle, 
you know, the receiver, the tight end, you know. So uh, there's guys everywhere, and the quarterback is really playing at a high level as well. So, you know, they challenge you uh, on all levels of the defense, um, and their scheme is outstanding. Uh, they really do a great job that way, and, uh, you know, um, you know, you had a good scheme, good players, and there's a reason why they've won a ton of games over the last few years, and they're certainly outstanding. And, you know, we'll look back on some of the things that, um, you know, we did a few years back, um, and I'm sure they will too. Uh, but uh, it'll be, uh, be be a great challenge, but we're looking forward to it. I, I Watching them over the years uh, with Coach Shanahan, his running game has got a lot of sophistication to it. I mean, it is, it's a uh, – it's a very challenging run game that he has, isn't it? Well, it is. And, and um, you know, uh, they say what imitation is uh, when people imitate you, what you're doing there. It's a it's the biggest, greatest form of flattery. Well, a lot of teams across the league have kind of taken elements of what um, they have done. And uh, you can see versions of their run game, you know, smattered around the league now. And, um you know, so yeah, he he does a terrific job, um, and the way they scheme each team is a little bit different, but they do have their core runs. And and as as I mentioned, you know, then go ahead and put one of the best running backs in the league behind that good offensive line and in that scheme. It just there's a reason why they're doing what they're doing. Right, and he's leading the league in rushing, McCaffrey. Um, but I think Seattle is is a good um, indicator. I think their their running game. Reminds me a little bit of what they, they've taken some of the San Francisco concepts and adopted that, haven't they? A hundred percent. Yeah, they, they, uh, yeah, yes, one hundred percent. They did. That's good. I guess face face that uh, before have to go face the originator, the yeah, uh, San Francisco Forty yeah. ers Get a little bit of a taste before you no get the full, the full meal, I guess. Coach, can't thank you enough for uh, for sharing time with us, and, uh, and as always. You know, I, I know when a, a great coach is involved, when players respond and they show the energy, the enthusiasm, the, where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there. And I, there's no doubt that every single player in your locker room loves you, coach. And that's that's what it's all about. Well, I appreciate that. I hope so. Uh, you know, we, we, we got a great thing going here. And the coaches, as you mentioned, the coaches, the players from Zach on down, everybody wants uh, and has one goal, and that's to come out and win these games and do it the right way. And, um, you know, we'll keep getting better as we go through it. Yeah, and finally, I mean, it's like, okay, have not put a game together where offense, defense, special teams, all three phases clicking at a high level in the same game and still three and three and played some pretty good football teams. Tells me there's still meat on the bone, and, man, when it happens – Look out, NFL. Here come the Bengals. Looking forward to that. I hear that, sir. Have a great bye week, and uh, thanks, as always, for your willingness to join us as regularly as you do, sir. No problem. Thanks a lot. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation leadership and appreciating your teammates are key at first star logistics you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family build your future by working hard like i did you'll see results both on and off the field call first star logistics today and be part of our winning team